Um, in my team, we talked about how at the Boys and Girls Club, there's people come from different communities and different different backgrounds and different cultures, and that sometimes people don't see the police in a good light because of the country that they come from and how those police officers might be brutal. So we were talking about how uh, ways to see the police in a better light and maybe have like community activities and collaborations that you can see people, uh, police officers as people too, not just like when they put on that uniform, that there's a, like a line of separation between the community and the cops. Thank you. Thank you. West, we talked about different cultures and we wanted to know does the Manchester PD have the proper training to deal with foreign people, people from other countries? Let's say people that don't trust the cops, the police. Do we? How do you educate your police officers to deal with that situation? Let's say you pull over somebody that don't trust the police, that don't want to talk to you. Do you guys need proper training? And we also understand that there's patrol officers and uh, community policing officers. Do the patrol officers get the proper training to deal with those people as well? That was my question. But we came up with a quick three points. Uh, the first one is we talked about uh, police recruitment. And we know this is not an easy task, but just like in the school system, it's important where, for teachers to mirror uh, the students they serve, and the police department should hopefully do likewise. Uh, as we looked around tonight, we saw mostly white police officers. And we did hear from Mark, uh, one, an officer at our table, that Chief Mara and the police department is really trying hard to recruit, recruit people of difference, non-whites. and But it's not easy, but we just really, really hope that that effort can continue on, because that way, uh, different people in different population groups, you'll know, have role models in the police force, and that's very, very important, as it is in the school system, too. And another one is um, uh, people of difference, newcomers that are here, often talk back to the police. And, um, and they need to be more civil. And this was brought up at our table. And so maybe something could be done to help the youth be more civil and not start off on the wrong foot when they are stopped by police and, and ask questions. Somehow or other, if they start in a more civil way, uh, that will lead to a better outcome. And then the last point was uh, more community grassroots meetings with the police. And I think we heard about that in some of the prior uh, report outs, uh, and I think this is a good start too. Hey, uh, my name is Addy Seymour Wright. Uh, I am a community organizer here in Manchester, New Hampshire. And uh, so a couple of things. Uh, one is, if I am not mistaken, the theme of this conversation was what race has to do with it. And just from my personal opinion, I think a lot of times people don't really want to touch the real issue, which is the race issue. I mean, we can talk about other things that are actually affects of the real issue. And I think a part of that has to happen. People have to be willing and open to actually talk about the real issues, the roots, causes of some of these things that we end up facing. But at my table, we did talk about uh, a lot of different things. And personally, I believe that it all starts by looking at each other as human beings, uh, creating places where you can actually sit at a table with a police officer and you're looking at him like, no, this is a father, he has children, he's somebody's uncle, he's so and so. And them looking at you, not as a thug, not as a as a bad person, but looking at you like, no, this is a community organizer, this is a college student, this is somebody's son. I think that's where it all begins. Fantastic. Um, I wanted to uh, pick up from what the uh, juvenile detective talked about, which was food. Um, and this is a suggestion uh, that I, I wrote up at our table. Um, Next week, we're gonna. My, my wife and I are starting a potluck dinner at our home. Uh, we're gonna have four or five families over uh, to kind of jam them in. Um, we'll have Dominican food. We'll have African American food, African African food. My wife's Japanese, so we're gonna have quite a mix. And and uh, uh, I, I mention this because it's something I did when I lived in Queens, where I had across the street Indians, Lithuanians, uh, Colombians on my right side, uh, folks from. Uh, Philippines on my left side, and, and it worked out really well. Um, you, you don't have to talk too heavy. Uh, you just get together, sing a song, and, and, and eat, and you do that on a regular basis, and, and people get to know each other. And how could that work in, in this sort of a, a setting or with this sort of a theme um, you know, that we're talking about tonight? The, 
the officers from the Manchester Police Department uh, and the citizens get together in a place like this. Everybody brings a dish. And if you do that on a regular basis, food makes people happy. There's going to be conversation. Uh, and that could, that could turn into, um, you know, extracurricular meetings where uh, people really become friends and, and get together and share each other's families with each other. Uh, but pretty much. Um, my team here, we talked about youth education regarding the police. So I think it's very important if uh, the police or so the youth can reach out to the police at a young age to be educated on what to do and what not to do the laws. And uh, we also talk about how Manchester and New Hampshire is uh, well uh, diverse. We have people coming from different countries and they have different cultures. So when they're being stopped, they approach and speak to the police on a different uh, level the way they're used to back home. And with the police not being well educated on how they will react, it will uh, definitely cause a confusion. So we also uh, didn't talk about food, but we also talked about the uh, recruitment, how the police officer department can, uh, which they've been doing, try to reach out to minorities, black, Hispanics, try to hire those kind of uh, police officers and police department. Maybe from there they can reach out to their own communities and also educate the people. I feel like the only thing I wanna say the change needs to start with us first. Before blaming the police for something, we need to know to respect the police and how we need to talk to them. Because the police, to me, I feel they're angels. I've been in trouble before, yes, I do. But I feel like more we respect them, we have like bad and good cops, but the change needs to start with us first. Go home, go ask how you can make a change. So if you find out you can make a change, that's gonna help you and the police up union together. Thank you. As you officers interact with the youth in the community, one of the one of, one thing that I noticed works a lot with young young boys, young girls too, but young boys, is just speaking to their future. So yeah, there are a lot of prejudices. But if you come up on a young black young man who's let's say four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What about saying to them, I would love to see you as an officer. We could use someone like you on the complete on our police force. I think that is very, very instrumental. And it begin it, number one, it's gonna start a dialogue. But secondly, he'll think about that. So we're all asking Chief, what what's he gonna do? What are you gonna do? What's your next step? What's the next thing you're gonna do? I'm going to tell you in the 70s, it wasn't like this. We could not have this dialogue. It just wouldn't happen. So we've come a long way. We're not there yet. We've come a long way. We've still got a journey ahead of us. But all I say to everybody, when you leave this room today, ask yourself, what am I going to do? How am I going to get involved? You could sit back and blame everybody else. But what's your next step? Uh, one thing that really struck me was a young man had said, uh, the community activist, uh, Addie. Addie. One, one thing that Addie said, and he's absolutely right, and he got up here to say that, we in America, we are afraid to talk about race. We're afraid to talk about issues. We're afraid to say what we feel, and uh, for, for different reasons. And I think if we, if we have the opportunity to hit more of these discussions, I think as time goes on, I think it'll get a little deeper. And if it, it, smaller groups, and I think if people, if anybody, any group here, wants to ever have the community uh, meeting at the police station, and then have a dialogue with us, get a tour of the police station, and I agree with you 100% as far as going up to kids. We, uh, we have a PAL building here, downstairs and, and up here, we have all kinds of programs, and if you look at the reflection, if you look at the face of the kids that come here, it is a reflection of Manchester. And, and so I, I, would like the, I would like the kids to get involved earlier with us. We try and have to do that. We have a long way to go. Like I said, I'm not saying we're here, we're perfect. I'm, I'm here to tell you we want to work with everybody and we want to change the police department. We want to change the city. We want to do it all together. So.